Hi and welcome, glad to be here and have you on this journey. Today, we're going to take a look on how to use Populate Flag in Strapi. So whenever you're making a request and you want to populate deeply nested relationship, that is what we're going to talk about. So welcome to this Strapi recipes videos. And without any ado, let's get started. In today's video, we're going to take a look at population and field selection. I'll make sure to put a link to this documentation article that you could use as resource, but we're also gonna cover all of these things in this video. So you could take a look through this and we're going to take a look on how population works, which allows you to populate deep nested relations. So what does that mean? If I take a look at my content type, we have our article type where we have our title, description, slugs, cover, author, category, which are relationships. Then we also have our dynamic zone with blocks that have different components that have nested components in them as well. And by default, this is not gonna be populated if you make a request. Let's see what happens when we go to our endpoint API slash articles and we search for that article with ID of three. When I click send, we get forbidden. Now, if this is happening, this is most likely due to the fact that you did not set permission to allow public access to this endpoint. By default, Strapi locks down all the endpoints and you have to give permission specifically. This is an easy fix by going into settings, going to roles, going into public in our case, and we want to make sure that we're able to find all the articles. So we'll do find one and find many. We also want to make sure that we're able to get the author's data, find and find one. And we're going to do the same thing for category, find and find one. Make sure you click save and let's try this query again. Going back, we click send and now you see that we get our data. But if you could take a look at our response, we only see the title, the description and the slug. But if you take a look at our content types in our content type builder, under article, we have way more data. Outside of having title, description, and slug, we also have our cover photo, our author relationship, our category relationship, and our blocks. But notice, none of those things are populated. Why? Because by default in Strapi, you have to tell what things you want to populate. The reason we do that is to prevent underfetching and overfetching. So how can we solve this? So going to our documentation, we see this nice reminder to make sure that we give permission to our endpoints in order to get the data. But if you want to populate first level relationship, we do have this wildcard but just be aware that it only allows you to populate the first level deep. So taking a look at our content type builder, what that means is that we're going to be able to get the title, description, the slug, the cover photo. We're going to get author because it's first level relation, our category, our blocks, which will show our media, quotes, rich text, and slider, because that's still first level deep. But if you take a look at our quote component, we have a quote author uh, component, which is on the second level, and that's not gonna be populated for us. So please be aware when you're using the wildcard, it will only cover first level deep. So let's take a look at the example and see how that works. So here I'm going to add populate, add our star and click send. And let's take a look at our response. We have our title, description, slug. We have our cover photo. We have our author information. We have our categories and we have our blocks. And within our blocks, we have all the different components, including our rich text, our quote, and like I mentioned before on our quote, we're only going to populate title and body and not our quote author component because that's nested on the second level. And that's the drawback of just using wildcard all the time. So in the next part of this video, we're going to show you how to do deep nested population using different populate flags that we have. And there's two ways to do it, either with the array notation, which has its benefits because it's more of a shorthand, or using our object notation, which gives you more control and allows you to do more things. By the way, did you know that we have Strapi Cloud coming up? So depending when you're watching this video, by following the link before, you could either join the waitlist or it is already out. 
So definitely check out Strapi Cloud because it's going to be the easiest way for you to deploy your project. Now back to the video. So before we cover deep nested population and field selection, I want to take a look here at what we call LHS bracket notation. Here you could see how we're able to add different notation to specify different things we want to populate. Even though you can use this, this is not the recommended way because your queries will get uncontrollably huge. Instead, we prefer that you use on your front end a library called QS that allows you to write your query in a human readable way. Because in my opinion, this looks way better than this. And if you can imagine the bigger your query gets, the more unreadable this notation is going to become. And you can find this at QS and PM. You could read more about it, but I'm also going to share this REPL that I created that you can use to construct your queries. So with that being said, let's continue. So to recreate our original query, what I'm going to do inside this QS stringify function is pass an object where we're going to specify populate and we're going to add our star. So this will replicate that original query that we did. So if I run, this is going to generate my query here. And let's take a look at our response by clicking on here. We see the same data, title, description, slug, our cover, our author, our category, our blocks. And again, we are only populating first level deep. So we're not getting all the rest of the items under our shared quotes. So going back, now that we know that we could use this to construct our queries, what the different notations that we have? Oh my gosh, this video is getting long and I want to make sure that we have bite-sized videos for you to learn more about Strapi. So in the next video, we're going to talk about field selection and talk about two ways that you could do deeply nested population using the array shorthand syntax or using our object notation. So I'll see you in the next video. With that being said, if you're not on our Discord server, make sure you hit the link below and join because every third week of every month, we do our Strapi Discord best practices sessions where you get to learn intermediate to advanced topics around Strapi. And what's awesome because it's live, you're able to join in and ask questions. Questions. So with that being said, thank you so much and I'll see you in part two of this video. Take care, have a great one and see you in the next video.